children in our last class we had studied about refraction and laws of refraction and we had come to know about the term refractive index now using snell's law refractive index can be calculated by the relationship a mu g equal to sin i upon sin r this implies that refractive index of the second medium with respect to the first medium is given by sin i upon sin r here in particular it is depicting that refractive index of glass with respect to air is sin i upon sin r refractive index can also be calculated in terms of velocity of light since the bending of light takes place due to the difference in the velocity of light in different mediums so refractive index in terms of speed of light is given by speed of light in medium 1 to speed of light in medium 2 now we all know that speed of light in a medium is correlated to its frequency and wavelength and what is the relationship speed is equal to the product of frequency and wavelength that is v is equal to f into lambda where v is the velocity f is the frequency and lambda is the wavelength of the wave now the frequency of the light it depends on the source of light isn't it whatever is the source the frequency of the light will depend on it and so will remain unchanged because we don't change the source therefore when light passes from one medium to another its wavelength changes in the same ratio as the change in the speed this means this is coming from this relationship v is equal to f lambda now what i am saying is that frequency will not change because it is coming from a particular source and since there is a change in the velocity when light enters from one medium to another wavelength is also going to change so remember that when light passes from one medium to another it wa its wavelength changes in the same ratio as the change in the speed now since we were writing refractive index as what we said refractive index is equal to speed of light in medium 1 upon speed of light in medium 2 we have just now done that v is equal to f lambda so that means when i talk of absolute refractive index this will be equal to wavelength of light in vacuum into its frequency upon wavelength of light in whichever medium it is entering into its frequency and i have already told you that frequency of light does not change so from here this factor of frequency we can eliminate and what do we have we have absolute refractive index is equal to wavelength of light in vacuum upon wavelength of light in the optical medium that means now the refractive index can be calculated in terms of wavelength of light also so the refractive index suppose air is light is traveling from air to glass then it will be the wavelength of light in air upon wavelength of light in glass 
So, there is yet another way to calculate the refractive index. It is in terms of wavelength of light. Children, this is showing you a table of refractive index of different materials. Like you are given refractive index of air as 1.003. Then you have water 1.33. I am just recalling few of them. Then you have uh, rock salt 1.54. Carbon disulfide 1.63. Uh, you need to learn one or two of them. You can choose according to your own convenience. Now children... Refractive index of diamond is 2.41. What does this mean? It means that light travels in air 2.41 times faster than in diamond. As we know that refractive index is equal to velocity uh, or I can say refractive index of diamond with respect to air is equal to velocity of light in air upon velocity of light in diamond. Now this value I am saying is equal to 2.41. So this means that light travels in air that means you know how it will come. Velocity of light in air. Air will be equal to 2.41 into velocity of light in diamond. This is how you are getting it. So, the information that refractive index of diamond is 2.41 gives us that light travels in air 2.41 times faster than in diamond or I can even say that speed of light in diamond is 1 upon 2.41 times the speed of light in air. Now children speed of light in a medium is given by the relation for refractive index. The relation is given as, now see this is refractive index is equal to speed of light in air upon speed of light in the medium. Now see here what we have is that refractive index is equal to speed of light in air, let's say C upon speed of light in the medium. Now, from here, if I rewrite this, then I have V is equal to C upon mu. Now, the speed of light in air is a constant value. So, this will imply that V is inversely proportional to refractive index. So what we need to remember here is that velocity is inversely proportional to refractive index. It can be inferred from the relation that light will travel the slowest in the material which has highest refractive index since they are inversely proportional. So, higher the refractive index, lesser will be the speed of light and it will travel the fastest in the material which has the lowest refractive index. Now, the refractive indices of kerosene, turpentine and water like for kerosene it is 1.44 turpentine 1.47 and water 1.33. So, what do you think you infer from it? You will come to know, you can see that refractive index of water is the least and 
the refractive index of turpentine is maximum among these three liquids. This means that since refractive index of water is least, the velocity of light in water will be more as compared to kerosene and will be highest in turpentine. Therefore, light travels the fastest in water. This we have inferred from the relationship that velocity is inversely proportional to refractive index. Now, these are just few points which you can remember. Uh, light travels slightly slower in air than in vacuum. There is only a small difference. Meaning that sun's light will refract slightly when it enters the earth's atmosphere. Then the refractive index of a material determined in air will be slightly different from the absolute refractive index. And you can even understand from here that value of absolute refractive index will be more than the normal refractive index. That means refractive index with respect to air since the velocity of light is maximum in vacuum. The absolute refractive index of a vacuum is 1 and for air it is 1.0003. So, for all practical purposes, they are taken to be the same. Now, let's study the factors that affect the refractive index. First is speed of light in the medium. You know the refractive index, we define it in terms of speed of light only. So, obviously, the speed of light does affect the refractive index. Higher the speed of light, lower is the refractive index. Second factor that affects the refractive index is the temperature of the medium. You, I hope you understand that when the temperature changes, the velocity will obviously change. So, when the temperature of the medium increases, the speed of light in the medium increases and hence the refractive index decreases as refractive index is inversely proportional to velocity of light. Third factor is color or wavelength of light. The color you know is defined by the wavelength. Greater is the wavelength of light in the given medium its refractive index will be less. Hence, the refractive index is least for red light with greatest wavelength and greatest for violet light with least wavelength. Fourth is optical density of the medium. Denser the medium, the speed of light in the medium will be less and hence the refractive index will be more. Now let's see what are the conditions for light to pass undeviated on refraction. Suppose light is passing from medium 1 to 2, then it will not be deviated under the following conditions. First, when the light is incident normally on the surface, that means that the light ray is making an angle of 90 degree with the surface and in this case the angle of incidence will be 0. So here you can see that light is traveling from air to glass making an angle of 90 degree with the surface. That means the incident ray and normal are coinciding. In this case the light will not get deviated, rather it will pass through straight. Second is, when the refractive index of both the mediums is the same. That means when light travels from one medium to another and the refractive index of both the medium 
happen to be the same, then even if the light falls obliquely on the surface separating the two media, it will pass undeviated.